My name is Rolf Rosenkranz and I'm here at the European Development Days in Brussels and with me is Simone Filippini, the CEO of Cordate. Yeah, nice uh, to be here. Thanks for being with us. Yes. So you've been a development worker and leader and then you went out of the business for six years and now you're coming back. Well, basically I was a Dutch diplomat and I have always been involved in development cooperation um, and what strikes me after coming back as the CEO of Cordate recently um, is that basically the agendas move so slowly. I sometimes have the feeling that, you know, so much paper is being produced, but so little changes in, in reality. I did some field visits lately and there it's, it has struck me again that, you know, um, it, it doesn't move on sometimes seemingly. Also the cooperation between partners, the way uh, uh, internationals deal with stuff, it, it goes too slow. I can really tell you it goes much too slow. We have to speed up developments. So what do you think are the barriers? The barriers? Oh my god, sometimes they're really um, kind of perverse in a sense. It's, all, it's about egos, it's about competing bureaucracies, it's about competing funding, it's c about competing organizations, it's about lack of leadership, about lack of ideas, of creativity, of political will. I mean, there are lots of factors that see to it that we move very, very slowly. I understand that the complexity, of course, I've been a diplomat. I know that the world is not simple, but after 50 years of development cooperation and development support, uh, international dialogue, I think we should move uh, faster than, uh, than this. If you had a prescription for the development community, especially those leaders that are trying to turn the tide right now, we have young leadership at USAID, for instance, we have a new leader of the World Bank who is trying to turn that agency into something else. What would be the two or three prescriptions that you would give yeah. these people? Well, prescription uh, is, is always a dangerous uh, word. Uh, there are no real prescriptions. But certainly, I think to get real is very important, to get over the egos, to make a system in which there is uh, uh, complementarity, but no competition between the organizations. Uh, they have to be mutually accountable also toward each other. Uh, inclusive, they we're, we're all working for the same goal, but sometimes it sounds as if we're not working for the same goal. I think UN, European Union, NATO also, of course, to a certain extent, we all, and the regional uh, organizations, we have to be willing to put the agendas together. Um, and then, of course, we have to start listening to the uh, country-level leadership. Uh, we have the Paris Agenda, we solemnly said we will align our policies to the national agendas, but in how far are we doing that? We want to keep a grip on what's happening there, and we don't allow national governments sometimes to make their own mistakes, let's be honest. I mean, you see that all the time. Um, but I think overcoming egos, uh, getting serious with what has been agreed on paper, because there's a wonderful agendas. The new EU agenda is fantastic. The high-level panel of the UN, for the agenda post 2015 is very appealing. Maybe it can be sharpened a little bit here and there, but it's appealing. We have so much good intentions, um, but let's start really implementing those agendas. You've been a diplomat, yeah. so you know that every euro you need to really account for. Yeah. And if you don't, then at home yeah. there's going to be problems. So yeah. how can you square that challenge? Well, I see the point, of course, but Let's also be honest there, we cannot account for every single euro. And so you have to, to be, you have to take into account that you will lose some money on the way. But at the same time, countries have to be able to make their mistakes. Of course you need accountability frameworks, that's, that's for sure. And we're all uh, audited uh, from A to Z every single day of our lives. So if we hire accredited auditors and accountants, why? Should that be that will be done double and triple and and, and quadruple time? Huh? It's, it's we, we we check all over uh, again. I think what you need is a trust in in governments, uh, good frameworks, and then give it a go. Um, and especially also work with uh, civil society. Also in our own countries, uh, a lot of the work on the ground is being done by civil society. Um, but there's a huge hiccup uh, regarding. 
the capacities of civil society to help their partners in developing countries. And I think there's a, a huge need of adequate support for civil society development, assertive citizenship building in, uh, in countries, especially when you speak about fragile states, um, conflict, post-conflict uh, uh, areas or countries, very important. And how does that all play out in your own world? Cordaid has a project, for instance, with the World Bank um, that you've yeah. been implementing. What have been some of the challenges that you've encountered there? Well, you, you can see that an organization is a huge organization, a huge bureaucracy, uh, the World Bank, and uh, they haven't been working uh, that much with uh, civil society organizations yet. Uh, we have a large program in Zimbabwe, it's an excellent program by the way, so performance-based financing in health, uh, primary health care. The thing is that the bureaucracy of the World Bank and the rules they, uh, they set, even after contracts have been signed sometimes, um, uh, are obstacles in, in good implementation of the programs. So they are so much on top of things that they don't give leeway to the realities to develop. And I think there's, uh, we can learn from those types of situations. I don't mean to offend anybody with that, but it's just that we need to increase the learning curve and be willing to openly discuss issues that don't go so well. Uh, there is always this obstacle in being honest about what we do well or where we can improve on ourselves. And I think it would be great if there would be a more open dialogue on the basis of confidence and shared objectives instead of lack of confidence and distrust and the idea that we don't share agendas because we share agendas all from our different perspectives me now from an NGO perspective others from government perspectives others from multilateral perspectives but we all want to go in the same direction and that's for 2030 of course zero poverty uh, as long as we keep that in mind and become a little bit more pragmatic and practical about things I, I think the agendas can really move on and take what we uh, what we put on in theory, what we agree upon, that we take that seriously and that we uh, practice what we preach. Mm. Could you explain a little bit more how exactly you've experienced this, uh, this collaboration with the World Bank? You, you've mentioned, I believe, that uh, some of the Gulf Coast were maybe changed after the project yeah. had already been approved. Yeah. So what are some of the other things that you've encountered there that have made your life as an implementer somewhat more difficult? Well, the World Bank is, you can see that it's used to really huge projects. So they have uh, procurement rules that sometimes don't make sense. If you have to buy eight vehicles for a project and you have to do an, uh, a huge procurement uh, uh, pro uh, program, it's, it's nonsense. That, and, and we knew before, for example, that that would fail. Uh, but still, we spent a lot of money on renting cars. Yeah, it's, it seems trivial, sorry to say so, but in the end it all costs money and time and uh, we could have immediately bought eight cars or ten cars instead of going through the motions and we knew before that those motions were not going to succeed. So I, I think that we have to, to, to go through the bureau bureaucratic rules and regulations, see what is uh, useful, cut out what, uh, what uh, is obstructive in terms of getting results together and, um, and become more pragmatic.